Hello and welcome to Let's Play in the Space 2, Series 8, Episode 25. I'm JC Proton and we are picking up uh, where we left off in the middle of turn 83. Uh, we are playing a standard faction of the, whatever these guys are called, <laughs> the Unfallen. Um, and uh, we're playing a normal speed game on endless difficulty. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, off camera, I um, moved population around and updated my build queues just to make sure everything was squared away. Um, uh, we still need to do uh, ship movements and do some probing uh, of curiosities and stuff. Um, had some questions, uh, again, uh, from viewers. Um, Jeffrey Draper was asking about Guardians, and maybe I can do spaceport tricks with those. Um, uh, the mechanics of guns with missile defenses, autonomous administration, and I wanted to also discuss diplomacy pressure type stuff going on. So we got that stuff going. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely jump into that stuff in this video. Um, I want to just go ahead and do the, the, the ship movements first. Um, and kind of leading into that is... <clears throat> He wants trespassers out uh, because I moved fleet in over here again. Uh, and I think that's why Horatio is a little bit peeved at me because I had that military ship in his space. They just don't like it, right? They don't like it. So, um, so diplomatic pressure wise. What now? Um, the hive has little to say. Yeah, right. Um, so we're at a minus 0 0.6 per turn so the influence pressure is moving this way to the left which is bad um, if it gets to this level um, over here then he'll be able to make a demand on me and if it goes all the way then he gets a big demand right so so at this distance we have a little time right we've got some time here so no big rush but uh, as he approaches that point of making a demand, we're going to have to make a decision here. Um, we could do a diplomatic, uh, or whatever, a bureaucratic imbroglio, um, which will make it where he has less pressure on me. Um, but it, it sours our relations if you do that. Um, I could just declare war, right? That's taking it to the extreme, and then we no longer have diplomatic pressure, then you have war pressure instead, like I have going on over here with Vladimir, right? We've got this war pressure going on. Um, you can see it's moving a lot, basically almost plus 10 per turn. So we'll, we would be able to impose a truce or make a demand or something <clears throat> pretty soon, but I don't really want it to end. Uh, not right now. So, anyway, we've got some time with Cravers. Uh, essentially, we've got, um, there, there's a, a trend going with all of these. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, being at peace cuts the pressure trend in half. Um, what it really comes down to is I just need to get good, right? <laughs> Uh, if you, a lot of the, of, of the pressure trend just comes from the fact of having a, your score, right? And then it's about how the, um, uh, it's pressure that you have, uh, uh, like border friction as well. Um, so really because I'm in fifth place and these other guys have higher score than me, then that gives them more political pressure on me. And so as my score comes up, then that'll kind of take care of itself a little bit, um, so it's not super urgent to deal with right now. I just need to make a decision about what I'm doing with his fleet. Am I going to retreat like he wants um, or no? And if I say no, then he's going to say something about saber rattling and probably reduce my um, political influence um, to all empires. Um, so I'm going to refuse. And then that hurts my political pressure even more because now I look like I'm a warmonger, right? And that people don't want to deal diplomatically with people who are warmongers. Tell us. Tell us what you plan. Yeah. Everyone will know about your bullying and saber rattling. Reduce pressure from me against other empires. So 
I look like a bad guy. The hive is watching always. Hmm, he's closing his borders to me, huh? Tell us. Tell us what you plan. Hmm, I probably should have moved before I... Yeah, it doesn't let me. Okay, so now the only way I can continue exploring is to declare war on him. Well, I want to keep exploring. So, I was not planning on doing this, but I guess we're declaring war on the Cravers. Who else are they at war with? Nobody. They have uh, an armistice. They have a peace. They have a ceasefire with the alliance of four, but they're also at war with Vodhyani. Okay, well, I'm going to be helping them out by declaring war, unfortunately. I don't really want to spend the influence on that, but what are you going to do, man? All right, let's do it. What now? The hive has little to say. There we go. That helps him out. He gets he gets an approval bonus for every um, faction that he's at war with. We may not consume you, but all are consumed in time. Your actions threaten the hive, but we feel no fear. Okay. All right, so now that we've declared war, um, we can continue. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> All right. Well, it is what it is, man. Uh, you know, questioner... Well, the questioner's going to cease fully charged. I want him to send a probe here and here. All right, well, this is not guarded. So let's take the loss to ratio over here. Since we're at war. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to attack them. <clears throat> Horatio, that uh, ship may not be long for this world. Our purpose is to kill. You, though, will suffer as well. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, yeah. Which way to go? Um, I think I'll send a probe up this way. Just, oh, wait, I can explore. Subterranean one, Guardian, Guardian. I think I'll send the probe up there. Kind of scout it out up there. And he has movement left. I guess he's just going to wait. I'm not going to guard. See, Timos is done. Right? Computer's kind of laggy.
much stuff do we have in Go Moves? Atmospheric 3. And a Guardian. Not a good sign. All right, doing those expl explorations and sending out the probes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, Warden. <laughs> Looks like we're done there. I looked around off screen and I really didn't see a bunch of um, rare curiosities and stuff. Um, I guess I'm just going to wait a turn here. Uh, I don't know. It's the ultra deep habitats hasn't really hasn't completed yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to do these two and then. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted to talk about. Um, my researching so I was debating about whether I want to do the movement speed things first or if I want to do the battle tactic uh, next um, this battle tactic here that gives me aerial uh, ground troops it'll be nice to have aerial ground troops against the United Empire um, I have queued up a total of um, I've got 12 more um, siege, uh, not siege. Uh, I got, I have twelve more vines um, queued up behind um, eighteen more siege. So uh, I've got all these. These siege are coming out in the next two turns. Uh, I've got basically seven core systems: A A A B A C A D A E F G. I think it is. So anyway, I got uh, sieges for two turns, and then vine ships after that. Um, it's the same on each of these systems. Yeah, computer's very laggy. That's not a good sign. Uh, hopefully, I don't have a recording problem. Um, sieges and vine ships. Um, yeah, and that one siege is in three turns. Um, and that's the only one that's taking three turns to get there, and it's out of AG because it's um, closer. So he's the last one. So I have six vine ship, I uh, mean, I have six siege ships out, three headed this way to the south fleet, and three headed up here to the north. So another 18 siege ships will give me an extra nine to each of those, so we'll have a dozen siege ships, and that'll give us about... Uh, 300 siege value per turn that will siege down United Empire. Um, so it's going to take two turns to get those built and then another two, three turns to get them moved. So that's like four or five turns away before we're at full siege value. Um, you know, and then we'll be able to actually start doing some invading. So we'll reevaluate at that point, um, which whether I need to do the movement speed stuff first. Because I will have um, the need, I'll supposedly have visibility once I complete this research in three turns. So I have a sneaking suspicion I'm probably wanna, going to want to do um, these two researches next. Uh, 
um, quite likely. Uh, but we'll see. I'm going to leave it open so it'll just uh, surplus Q um, temporarily uh, when, once we complete the research. And I'll, I'll reevaluate at that time. Uh, speaking of research, so we completed Trade Company Headquarters uh, research, which we have queued up. Excuse me, in the planetary build queue for my home system. So he's building it uh, right now. Um, the Graviton Shielded Labs, I ended up not putting any in queue because we don't have that much Hyperium. Um, I'll build them as we complete um, other research buildings. And let's see, yeah, we completed that. So I think maybe when we take over the next turn, we might get more visibility uh, into. Uh, the different uh, where where they are, so we completed that um, slag and sludge industrial zones. We built the siege ships and we moved those. Um, we already updated this stuff, so that's all done. Let's see, last four ship movements. Let's see, those dudes are gonna hang out. These guys are gonna hang out. They're not attacking these fleets. And Libra, we're gonna be sieging it down. Do we have it guarded? Yes, we are guarding it. So that going up by 10 shouldn't probably happen. <laughs> okay, so then I'm not gonna do anything there. What I could do, actually, come to think of it, these thorns are all at full troops. <clears throat> See, they're 1,500 to 1,500. This fleet one is at 445 of 900. What I could do, and I don't have the option of separating the bastion out of this fleet, so I think what I might do is just go ahead and come over here and let him get a little bit more troops. <clears throat> come over here to this system, and um, or not, I guess. Maybe not. Guess we won't do that. Okay, we'll just keep it in here this turn then. Okay. So all that's left is this questioner over here. <clears throat> okay, I guess I'll have him follow up here. Hmm. Yeah, I think I have a probe. Is it, who's, whose probe is that? Looks like it's green to me. Yeah. It's just right on this little red area that makes it look kind of orange. Okay, so I think it's one of my probes heading here. So I'll get visibility. This probe will give me visibility here. And then this probe might make it out here far enough to give me visibility here. And then this lost Horatio, Horatio ship will get to choose which way he's going to go. And um, so then I think I'm just going to take the questioner and head him up this way. <clears throat> okay, cool. Okay, uh, questions. Um, uh, the way guns work... Um, All right, so um, you have the uh, anti, you know, you know, ship ship vessel versus vessel damage component, and then you have the flak component. Um, so the flak component is shooting down missiles and squadrons and boarding pods, which we don't have that. Uh, we don't have boarding pods in this one because we don't have that uh, DLC expansion uh, active in this game, but. Um, Firing simultaneously with his host kinetic weapon, flak targets incoming 
stuff. So um, the question was, does sending missile volleys uh, um, cause the re in the the person you're attacking do do their kinetic weapons their guns have to choose between shooting down incoming um uh incoming fire or uh or or attacking your vessels and, and the answer is no it's actually simultaneous so um they have the direct attack and then if there is a need for flak they also do the flak simultaneously so it's it's not effective to do massive uh, missile volleys or squadrons or whatever to try to mitigate them uh, your opponent using their guns to fire directly on your ships. <coughs> Excuse me. So <clears throat> at least that's been my experience in the game. So uh, I've been kind of underwhelmed by uh, my my missile performance so far in the game. <clears throat> I'm going to hang in there for a little bit longer, but. Um, it's quite quite possible I may end up uh, eventually switching uh, my missiles out and start using more energy weapons, especially once I've got three of these researched and I have another improved energy weapon. I might, I might just double down on energy. We'll see. I might start doing uh, some squadrons as well uh, when I get carriers and when I get advanced carriers. Once I have these three unlocked, I'll probably... Um, unlock these more advanced medium ships as well <clears throat> and I'm definitely uh, wanting to get going here on uh, more trade and uh, get these unlocked as well so that I'll have the, the, the top tier strategic uh, resources so all of that is juggling in my brain right now <clears throat> um, uh, the idea of doing the spaceport trick with guardians um, I don't know that Guardians actually um, grow. I, I think they just exist. Um, and they appear in your uh, population queues. Like here's one on AD, right? <clears throat> it's there. Um, but when you go to it on the planet, they're locked. You're, you're not able to move them. I can't grab it. And move it into a build queue or I can't grab it and move it around to another planet they're just there and they're locked in place <laughs> so I can't uh, try to grow them or anything like that unfortunately um, I don't know if they um, consume any food per se but they they certainly act as a population I mean they're they are a population this is listing your population this is listing what's growing next so they definitely count as a system population and contribute to producing things. Um, I don't know what, what their uh, food pr um, consumption is. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's zero. I don't know. I, I've never noticed when playing like a race that doesn't make food that they end up starving to death or anything. So like if I'm playing the Riftborn, I don't think they starve to death. So I can't really do spaceport trick with them to grow more guardians. Uh, they're super, super powerful. I mean, on our approval at this point, we have plus 435 from guardians, right? Approval, it's nuts. Um, let's see. And he also a question about autonomous administration does unfollow have an autonomous administration the answer is yes uh, they definitely do have autonomous administration so we'll be able to do that mechanic uh, we'll be able to when we research it we get culture unshock and gives us plus four more systems immediately before triggering expansion disapproval and once we have leveled up our systems to level four then we can build autonomous administration so we're rapidly moving uh, along here to on that path towards getting the top tier uh, system upgrades. Um, okay, so that was all the questions that uh, we had from Jeffrey Draper 4019. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next turn. I want to keep an eye on this in case uh, creators decide to send their fleet over here. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry with the sniffles. Yeah, it's uh, 
It's, uh, it's, it's, it's what it is. All right, so we're at 15, 12. Trying to get to fourth place. Let's see how this goes here. Okay, that looks safe. There's nothing to explore there. This appears to not be guarded. So we'll head that way. This one's not guarded either. Okay, attack. Take out that population. <laughs> okay, you go here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Vladimir proposing a truce. I was afraid he might do that. <clears throat> I don't know if I have enough influence to, to refuse it. It's going to be close. <clears throat> it's definitely still dragging and advancing the turn. discovered a boiler room new event <clears throat> construction complete asteroid field owned when I entwine QR 98 okay real quick Quick like a bunny. Explore, explore, explore. Guardian, Guardian, Subterranean 1. Or a Calcix, maybe? Quadranix? <laughs> Excuse me. Alright, we're going to move over towards Beertus. <clears throat> Basic fusion torpedoes. Alright, not super impressive. Let's go to Wii. Wii! Alright, there's a Guardian, a Ruins 2, and a Guardian. Let's do the Ruins 2. <coughs> Twenty titanium, very nice, very nice. Calgaro's population collection bonus. Cool, he's up to twenty. Oh, there was a thing I was going to point out. I, I I realize I forgot. Um. So on the unfallen, I was moving population around, and I had dropped below fifty unfallen. So then I lost this. Um, um, collection bonus for that 50 and I noticed that what happened was um, on a system uh, my uh, bonus dropped from uh, plus 12 percent ownership to um, to plus eight so like here at it was it, it was at plus eight per turn um, when I had, like, for example, do I have any there? Okay, here we go. Um, if I take three off system temporarily, 
now you'll see it's at plus 8% per turn. And then when I put these down on system again, now I have 50 unfallen, so I have a collection bonus uh, that gives me plus 12% per turn. <clears throat> and that's just based off of this um, ownership recovery rate. So makes it make, makes you get ownership of the system a little bit quicker, uh, essentially. Uh, let's see. Peek at these. Oh, okay. Boiler room. <clears throat> a new event. Okay, this must be triggered by building a trade uh, headquarters. So if I approve, I get plus 20 dust on systems for 10 turns. <coughs> Excuse me. Or if I deny it, I get approval and plus 10. So it's 10 or 20. It's just uh, do I, how much money do I want and do I want to risk a political crisis? I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I'll do that off camera. Epistus boost ended. I probably need to reboost them because I think their population is still pretty low. Yeah, I'm probably going to reboost them. I'll do that off camera. And let's see, Harmony. Population grew, so yeah, I'll, I'll look at those off camera. Guardians have 21 now. There's a Guardian Law. <laughs> Interesting, let's go find out what that is. What is the Guardian Law? Peace prescription, minus 50% peaceful treaty costs. As harmony and goodwill pervade planets and systems that contain guardian populations, political actions that promote peaceful relations become easier to enact. This law codifies guardian ideas of harmonious connections when handling xeno diplomacy. Okay, cool. So if I'm going to pass uh, some sort of treaty or do some sort of uh, political interaction, then I can just put that law in. Hmm. And it's I guess it's probably a free law, right? It doesn't cost anything to run all the time. Yeah, so I could just run it all the time. There's no upkeep. Speaking of law upkeep, um... This is kind of interesting. This creator of infrastructure, be the first to buy out three systems with influence and you get, using your influence conversion and you get micro expression manipulation, a um, deed reward, which is minus 50% influence costs on law upkeep. <clears throat> so that's pretty interesting. That would cut my, 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 my cost in half. I can run can run really good laws, expensive laws, more easily, right? <clears throat> okay, that guy leveled up. And it's probably going to be this. That's what I'm leaning toward. Could be that as well. Um, I'll have to look at it off camera and decide. AB21 probably has a lot of population on it. And this guy leveled up as well. Probably gonna go for farming logistics. That's not really gonna be a problem. <laughs> that approval or that this is not gonna be a thing. Maybe that, but probably probably the food one is what I'm thinking. And let's see, we built our head headquarters, so we need to figure out where we're gonna put our minor uh, trade subsidiary. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you see we built a whole bunch of siege ships. Uh, let's see, how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We built eight of the 18 that we have coming out. And we colonized a cold giant, we colonized a toxic, and a snow, and a monsoon. 
all good stuff. <clears throat> We've got ownership here at QR98. <clears throat> Which is this? Oh, oh, I know what I want to do. Ah, I wanted to go over here to Heracles. I wonder if I can attack those guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go see. Does he still have his fleet over here? Yes. Let's get him. Attack. Yes. So he has his hero in his fleet, right? So, and he's damaged. So we're going to take this fleet out. It's going to wound his hero, his admiral hero. And that's going to give me progress on Forged in Battle. That should give me another hero defeated. <clears throat> so that'll be two out of the three, man, uh, towards getting this Behemoth Overdrive, which is a battle tactic berserker. So a battle tactic is apparently... Um, a, a fleet battle tactic and it makes sense since it's we're going after his admiral heroes that it's going to be some sort of fleet battle tactic no idea what it does <coughs> excuse me so let's rock that out bros um, so let's see that was completed that was the entwining um yeah, man, let's throw down, and we're going to do repair and recover. So, how's the matchup look? Um, we have 111,000 hit points. Um, we have 1.4,000 out of 1.8,000 crews, so we're a little bit off on our crew, so we're going to have a little bit less offense. Our, our attack power is uh, 10,500. Our defense is 9,100. Uh, our opponent has 64,000 hit points. Well, at max it's 63,000, 64,000, but he's at 30, about 32,000 hit points right now. <laughs> Around 5,500 attack and 2,400 defense. So we have him outgunned, out hit pointed, out defended. We got this guy, dead to rights, man. <clears throat> I decided it was worth chasing this down because uh, I want to wound that hero, and it's going to be a while until I have my um, siege fleets in position to go ahead and siege Batten. So I figured, you know what, let's just go ahead and go for it and, and try, try to catch him here. And so that looks like it's worked out. All right, so I have no idea where he's going to go on all this stuff. Um, I think I'm going to double up in the center lane. <clears throat> um, I'm torn, I'm very torn. Um, what is he about? That's a lot of missiles. Or no, he's got squadrons. Okay, he's got squadrons. And then that's pretty much direct fire. And that one looks like torpedoes. <clears throat> or missiles. Um, okay. I think this should be okay. I think this should be okay. I'll leave this guy out by himself in case uh, he gets attacked a lot. He has that um, armor that gets him extra experience for uh, damage that he is absorbed. <clears throat> okay, let's try this way and hopefully it works out fine. We, we it should because we have gone by so much. <clears throat> We're best at medium range. Medium and short. Long is where we're the weakest. And that's where he's the strongest. So. Alright. Here we go. <clears throat> huh. Wow. He had similar thoughts as me when planning his attack. Wow. So his squadrons are starting down here. And they're going to go all the way to the top lane, I think. That'll be interesting to see how that goes. 
<clears throat> I'm just going to watch it cinematic to start with. like my missiles hitting his ships. Cool. It'll be interesting to see what the numbers look like. Let's find out. Well, we smoked him. We know that much. <clears throat> All right. Our missiles delivered. We actually did some damage with them. Okay. That's cool. That makes me happy. Uh, say kinetic weapons, missile weapons, and lasers. Pretty nice uh, division there of the of the damage. His armor got to do its job. His shields did their job, and we took fifty five hundred damage. Rail guns, missile weapons. A little bit of missiles got through. They had lasers. Apparently not any beams to speak of. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then my shields did what shields do. All right. And he went with gravity distortion, which increased hull plating penetration on his weapons. Okay. So we came out of that looking pretty good. Um, where are we at on hit points? Okay, 11, 111 out of 111. So we came out of there looking great. Oh, and our hero leveled up. Cool. Uh, we'll give him more movement. Or... Yeah, we'll probably do this one here. Plus one movement on fleets. I think that's the, the correct choice. <laughs> there a debris field. Nope. Okay. Let's rewatch it again. I want to see the tactical scan view of it. Look at that. Ooh, that might be a screenshot right there, boys. That's pretty cool. Neat. All right, so we'll go back to normal speed. Um, and we'll go to scan. <clears throat> All right, let's see how this goes skip to the action. We'll go ahead and get the attack started.
Okay. So that initial volley came in. Let's see how we do here. <clears throat> so these attacks are coming from other lanes and stuff too. Here comes bombers. So this is the middle lane. The bombers are coming to the middle lane. <clears throat> we took those out in a hurry. Hmm. All right, one last time. I just want to see uh, my missiles landing on him. Let's see, see how that went. definitely hitting the, the missiles are definitely hitting man so okay so they're not a complete waste <laughs> it just kind of depends on what your opponent's uh defenses are looking like all right cool um let's see if there's anything else i want to do real quick stuff see if there's anything that's jumping out at me real quick to do Okay, yep, so we are sieging down. Let's go ahead and separate the thorns. Let's see how we're looking. That guy, Bastion needs troops. And the hero vessel just doesn't really have troops, apparently. <clears throat> all right, so if we take all the thorns and separate them, they're at 1,500 to 1,500 troops, and the fleet is at, yeah, it needs another 555, whatever, 455 troops. <clears throat> Ooh, what do we have here? Horatio is coming at us. He might attack. He might declare war. Okay, here's what I want to do. I'm going to leave a thorn, an old school thorn. Let's see, what's this ratio look like? Not very much kinetic. Let's leave one thorn there.
bring our fleet over here. If he decides to declare war on us, then we'll throw down. And we'll smoke him, right? Because we've got 15,000 attack, and he's only got... Come on, computer. Pretty laggy. 8,400 attack. <clears throat> We have got him almost two to one. It'd be a nice fight. So, interesting. Okay. And here at Gonos, we can do a quick exploration. There's a Guardian and an Atmospheric 3. influence and we're just gonna throw some probes out here man Guess we can guard and then we'll hopefully catch this ship. I don't know how fast it is. Maybe we can blow it up. <clears throat> we'll see what's going on here. Maybe he's after these. I don't know. Maybe he's just wanting to get down here to explore. I don't know, man. He's He's been saying some kind of uh, unfriendly things towards me. So he may he may be itching to start a fight. I don't know. So lost Horatio is here. That thorns, he's just gonna guard and it's gonna keep this guy from growing new troops back. Tell you what, let's move our um let's move all our fleets. This, yeah, we'll move the siege ships towards where they're going. And these siege ships should be arriving. Uh, do we have something that can attack this settler at Batten? Anybody armed? Yes. Ha. Huh. Looks like I had the foresight to um, put fleet there. Okay, cool. Let's have this. All right, that's a ruins four. Settler, he's partially repaired. He might be repaired enough to survive an attack. All right, let's move one of these thorns over. Fifty-seven twenty, fifty-seven. They're both at full hit points. Let's go ahead and upgrade them. Why not? Take one out. 
they do more damage now. It's a Thorns 5. Okay, so one of those Thorns 5 is coming over here. And we're going to attack. Finish him. Maybe. Repair and recover. Can he retreat or does he just get blown up in battle? <clears throat> Mono e mono, right? It's not a fair fight though, because one's a military ship and one is a settler. Cool. Good to get that one wrapped up. Finish that guy off. Let's try to tie up loose ends, essentially, right? Yeah, you know, I could play around and get a little bit cheeky. I could get a little cheeky here. <laughs> See if he uh, pops a, a fleet out. I guarded here and nobody came out, so let's guard here and see if anybody pops out <clears throat> he might be kind of tapped out all right so right now He's sieging at two. So let's bring one of these siege fleets over and see how much it does. I think it's something like around 23. Because there's three siege modules and each of those is seven. But then you get a little bit for each ship or something. So it's uh, 25 now. Ah, doggone it. I hate when that happens. Well, I messed that up. <laughs> Oops. All right. Yeah, it seems like they're about 23. All right. Well, it's going to take a while. Uh, so I'll be, um, I think what I'll do is off camera, I'll um, take all these, uh, these siege ships I built and start moving them uh, this way and, um, and this way up here. Okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah, let's do stuff here at Kyos. Select all merge. All right, I have five probes, and there's five things here. Subterranean one, a guardian, a guardian, a guardian. Subterranean one. <clears throat> All right, let's do the subterranean one on a jungle that's maybe titanium or maybe some uh, minor luxury resource. Okay, cool. Dark glitter. All right. That's my booster for my main population. And the tiny forest gets another subterranean one. So another dark glitter, maybe? Or a titanium? Yeah, dark glitter. Cool. All right. And then we have three guardians. So there's a guardian. There's one. And there's one. There you go, Cravers. You're welcome. Now you have three guardian populations. <clears throat> and I get to colonize another one and a half systems. Let's 
see, how did that fight go? Totally one-sided. Wow, he had a real gun. Wow, he did more damage than I expected. Wow, he put real guns on his uh, settler, huh? All right, I think that's about... I think that's about everything. There we go, we'll do a guardian there. <coughs> Horatio's got a fleet there. I probably don't want to hang around. I think I'm going to head over towards Ranas. Cool, so now I'm at an approval bonus of 470 from Guardians. So that's an extra 47 systems I can be above this limit, basically. That's a, that's, that's a really big number. Um, okay, so that's the events of the turn. I think that's all the big stuff. And I'll, I'll do a bunch of stuff off camera, and we'll either pick up at the very end of this turn, or maybe we'll, we'll pick up at turn 85, is what, what might happen. Um, figure out where to move these scouts, but I don't think anything major is going to happen. Um, let's maybe... Let's see what happens if I put a vine ship over here. Let's see if I can entwine Phytus. If so, you know what? Why not, right? Horatio has a fleet there. It's letting me entwine. Okay, buddy. My buddy Horatio. Oh wait, what's he saying? Horatio has an eternal task to beautify the galaxy. <clears throat> Perhaps this helps you understand our actions. He does not want me entwining his systems. All tendrils in the process of entwining Horatio's systems will be removed. Systems already entwined will remain that way. <clears throat> They don't comprehend the beauty of our network that we can expand it. Okay, so I think it, I can, I'll, I'll accept, let him win, and then I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Because once he makes a demand like that, he can't make the demand again for a while. So, <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe I can move these guys over here. I don't want them to be too vulnerable to attack, though. So maybe I'll move them back here. I don't know. We'll do that for now. <coughs> Just to get them out of the system. Interesting. Okay, so Horatio does not want me entwining his systems. That's going to get a little interesting here because I really want Kraz and I want Kerr for sure. I really want that adamantium. And I'm going to entwine these as well. So we'll see what's going to happen here, man. I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to entwine as much as I can. I'd like to get Volans. 
I think, unfortunately, we might end up in conflict with Horatio, which is not something I want, because he is really strong. And, uh, I mean, honestly, Horatio is kind of to be feared in that if he gets, well, when, when he gets the uh, super biofuel factory, because he's so good at making so much food, that is going to be so much industry, man. He will be a formidable opponent. So I'm going to have to think about that carefully. Um, I'm going to definitely try to take all of the United Empire um, and then expand as far as I can. And then I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do uh, with the Horatio. Because, I mean, Horatio is in that alliance of four. So not only would I be in conflict with Horatio, but also that whole alliance. You know, that would put me in at war with with the Horatio and the Riftborn, which, you know, Riftborn are far away, so it's not a big deal. But it would be Horatio and the Sofans, right? You know, the Riftborn and the Lumeris. So Alright, I guess that's uh, I guess that's about it for this one. Um, see you guys in the next one and uh, thanks everybody for watching and for comments, questions, suggestions, and all that kind of good stuff. See you guys next time.